This is a pulse jet I made entirely out of plastic, and in today's video, I'll show how I built it, how it works, and the test runs we conducted to get this thing to actually run. But before I show you all that, I need to backtrack three months to when I encountered this video by Integza. As you can see, he 3D printed a pulse jet using an ignition system and propane as fuel. This one didn't really start up, so two months later he released another video where he used 3D printing to create a carbon fiber mold for a pulse jet that actually ran well, but I have one problem with that. It's not 3D printed, so I can't make it. So, as a young engineer, I designed my own engine. I first started off to want to learn the basics, so I started off with jam jar pulse jets, with, which just consist of a jam jar, a small hole in the lid, and some fuel. These engines never decided to work or even start up, so I went on to another design that fellow YouTuber Colin Furs uses, a Lockwood Pulse Jet engine. I printed the first design in which I did no research on Lockwood Pulse Jets and used gasoline as fuel. This is what happened. <laughs> As you can see, when I blew air into the combustion chamber, the fuel got grabbed by that air and thrown into the exhaust pipe, which caused flames. And this was what was causing it to not start. However, with this very, very small success, this made me way more eager to get an engine that actually worked. So I went onto the internet and designed an engine based off of the plethora of designs out there. After I printed two engines and glued all the parts together, I went off to create a throttle, because without a throttle, I can't control the amount of air going into the engine to actually make it start. Let me explain. When alcohol jam jar pulse jet starts up, it has enough oxygen in that tiny container to actually start a combustion. However, in a Lockwood pulse jet, it requires a stream of oxygen to go in to create a vacuum. This vacuum is what starts the pulsating combustion. I'll have more info on how pulse jets work in the description below. But because of how pulse jets work, a sitting liquid fuel will not work because all it'll do is it'll throw fuel into the exhaust and it'll just throw flames. It's literally like trying to start your car with your foot to the floor. There is no way this will happen because it'll just flood with fuel and it won't be able to turn over. This is always why you let off the foot before you turn the key. So to fix this issue, I designed an entire new fuel system that used propane instead of gasoline. This new system consisted of a propane tank that can act as a coarse throttle that is adapted to a small fine tuning valve so then I can actually tune how much flame is coming out the exhaust pipe and a small 12 inch piece of brass tubing with a small squished end to give a nice even flow. And this may seem like a very, very, very restrictive nozzle, but this tiny nozzle is capable of throwing an eight inch flame at little to any throttle. Now with the fuel system dealt with, it's time to actually test these engines. So I got my friend Eldon here, who is hopefully going to be able to be taught how to light one of these things, but uh, that's if they don't melt first. And uh, one thing to point out before we get testing is that I did add this 90 degree bend, so then we're not burning our hands off uh, when we uh, activate the throttle. So, want to get testing? Okay. So uh, my engine completely failed. I think that's just because I'm a throttle head and I burned a lot of the hairs on my arm off. But um, I'm gonna give the throttle to Elden. I'm still gonna monitor the air because this thing is, it has no variable at all. 
and hopefully he can start it with a slightly stronger material. After a lot of attempts with Lockwood engines, we just could not get them to start. They melted way too quickly and we ended up just burning our hands off. And with the sun about to set and a bunch of hope lost, I surprised Eldon with this engine. A thermojet. So, uh, is this big enough, Eldon? Uh, I guess. Uh, Maybe a little too big. However, after all the testing footage I had, sadly I lost the very camera that I'm using to record me right now due to storage space. I'm very sorry about this, but it also happened to be the one with the nice microphone. So, sorry for this bad test audio, but we actually did get this engine to run. And this is the test you've been waiting for. Ah, too much fuel that time. That was, that was so close, oh. Okay, the fact that this glowed red, yes, the plastic, it glowed red on the inside. Oh jeez. After this obvious success under my belt, I started wondering on how I could improve my engines and my setup. But sadly, I'm out of both time and plastic for this video, so if you really want me to revisit this topic, please consider subscribing. My channel is dedicated to DIY projects where I check the comment section for any video ideas I think fit, and I'll try and put them in a future video. I hope you guys really enjoyed the project, and thank you so much for watching.